Today is a real bad day to be a liberal. The Georgia charges against Trump were tossed. Trump last night won the Republican nomination to be president of the United States. In the UK, banned puberty blockers. So the liberals are losing everywhere. We got a lot to cover, and not just those things, but much more. But I want to start with what happened in Georgia because this was amazing. This is the judge that we've seen on TV the last few weeks in this Fannie Willis boy toy thing that's been going on. And he dismissed three charges against Trump. Some articles said six and some said three. Some said three, some said six, you yeah. know. But the one, the one that he tossed that is huge is yeah. the so-called evidence, the phone call. The, this big phone call, we were talking about this on the, on the last podcast, the phone call that was illegally recorded, we found, remember, because mm -hmm. uh, the guy that recorded it was in Florida. Florida has two-party consent. So it was an illegally recorded phone call, but the phone call was tossed by the judge. So they have no evidence, okay? So the case is done. Yep. Um, and, and by the way, he could, the judge could still rule that uh, by, of removing Fannie from the case. Let me read through this story. This is in the Daily Mail. Donald Trump has had three charges in his Georgia election case thrown out by the judge considering whether to disqualify Fannie Willis. And, and I got to say, it's not Fannie. It, her name, she spells it F-A-N-I. If it was Fannie, it would have like a W in it or something. I mean, that's Fannie. She just says Fannie because they probably mm -hmm. made fun of her in school. You know, with that name. Fulton County Superior Court Judge Scott McAfee wrote today in an order that six of the charges in the indictment must be quashed, including three against Trump. So there's six charges. Three of them three are— Three involve Trump. Okay. Okay. That's where the, I was yeah. a little confused. Yeah. Well, the, the, the news is confused because the way they're writing it is confusing. The order leaves intact other charges uh, in the indictment. The judge wrote that prosecutors could seek new indictments on the charges he did uh, dismiss. Good luck with that. Uh, the six charges in question, uh, I'm not going to go through all of them, but the uh, the big one is mm -hmm. the phone call. The phone yep. call is all the evidence, the RICO, exactly. the collusion. Without that, there is no case. The, 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 the insurrection, whatever they're trying to say. And the, it's and all the case the phone call. going on here with the documents is going to fall apart. That judge is going to toss that. She's already allowed Trump's. Trump's going to be in court Thursday or Friday in Fort Pierce. And... She allowed his team to put in a motion to dismiss, I think. Yeah. And I think that's – she's laying the groundwork for that. Yeah. That is definitely going to get dismissed. She knows it's BS. This is going to get thrown out. And then we have the – the E. Jean Carroll is going to fall apart on appeal. So the only thing they have left is the Jack Smith – with, with in, in D.C. Well, or something, that's, and that's, that's not going to go that, anywhere That's the either. J6 case. That's falling apart, too. But, you yeah, know, it's all falling the, apart. the Fulton County case, now keep, I want you to understand, the Fulton County case is all about, the, the only thing they got is that perfect phone call that he made, just like when he talked to Zelina. There was nothing wrong with that phone call. It's, I know. But, but that's the so-called evidence. So they got no evidence now, so there's no case. And the Fulton County case was the one that they thought was going to be the one that did Trump in because it's it's um, it's a state case. Presidents can only pardon federal crimes, not local crimes, right? State crimes, only federal crimes. So they thought this was going to be the one they'd get him on. And I'll tell you, um, I I said this when these hearings first started with when this story came out about Fanny and her gigolo boy toy. We very well are going to see a mugshot with her. And now we found out she was not only colluding with Kamala and, and the White House, meeting with them. She was meeting with uh, Liz Cheney, having meetings with Liz Cheney you as know, well. All so of these, this, this is all criminal. All of this is starting to come out. And when Trump is in office, oh, you're really going to hear everything's going to come out. Everything's going to come out. And a lot of people on the left are saying that Trump's going to get revenge. And, I've heard, and I, I don't think so. I don't, you know, I read his book, The Art of the Deal, and and the first page, I think, or the first few pages, he talks about how he loves to get revenge. Yeah. But for Trump, and I, but you know, he wrote that, he was a lot younger. He has said multiple times in many speeches lately, to him, he said, the best revenge is success. That's right. He said, that's the only revenge I want. And I thought that was such a great thing to say. He is not going to waste his time. He's, he's only going to have four years now. 
He is not going to waste those four years spending any minute. Let the House and the Senate handle it. OK, and they will. Because I, I think it's going to be a sweep in November across the board. Well, Kathy, he's going to spend his you know, time fixing the country when, and making America successful this, and laying the groundwork to this, keep that going. This story in Georgia today, OK, with the the, the charges getting dro- dropped, in particular, the phone call being tossed. That's the that's what they're that's oh, everything must be so happy. is based around that. That is revenge. Getting that that humiliation yeah. that F- Fanny right now is got to be really freaking but he's out. not Trump's not getting revenge. He just he this is why when you see him and you've told me you've seen him a few times that he doesn't have a worry in the world. No, because he has the truth on his side and he knows that the truth he is. He's patient and he knows that the truth will come out and it is coming out now. The chickens are coming home to roost, as they say, and all per- perfect timing right before the election. Oh, I mean, this is. This is amazing. And, you know, that when when this story broke today that the charge, in particular, the phone call, that's huge. The phone call being told the media reported it and then they immediately moved away from it. Like it was just a matter. Oh, well, you know, anything good that happens to Trump, they don't even want to talk. about. And that goes for Fox, because when this when this broke today, we put on the cable news, went through all of it. They couldn't wait to get away from it. They were talking about the TikTok legislation. Yep, they mentioned it, moved on to TikTok. Now, I I don't want to talk about TikTok too much, but I do want to say this. What's going on here? Okay. This banning of TikTok thing, TikTok, um, uh, and I don't want to get sidetracked. Don't talk about TikTok. No, we don't want to be like the news. But I do want to. I just want to mention something about it. TikTok is um, is Chinese spyware. It it influences public opinion among youth like nothing I've ever seen. And I think what's going on here is, I think the U.S. government is trying to get TikTok away from the Chinese because it's such good technology and does such influencing. Mm-hmm. I think like the deep state want TikTok, and yeah. I think I, so. What's going on here? They is, want to have that control. Is the deep state are going to get TikTok, and it may, some private company or public company may buy it, but it's really CIA, and they're going to use TikTok to influence opinion on things like the, the Ukraine. power of TikTok is yes, it really is to it's mostly young people, but older people are on it too. The young there people are, are going to get older though. Um, to influence the users of TikTok, which are millions, and influence how they think and how they. See the world is to huge, shape their worldview, and if they can have that, and right now the worldview on TikTok is of liberal worldview, and the, the, and there's trends, things become trendy, and and these kids do trendy things, and their followers, and they can use that in politics, cultural things, and other things. It's very powerful, and that's why they. I think you're right. They want you're going to see an American company buy it, and. Maybe it will be the CIA and, uh, you know, so be careful if your kids are on TikTok, definitely be careful what they're paying attention to. Yeah. So all these cases are falling apart, right? So Georgia, uh, wait till you hear this clip from MSNBC that I'm going to play about the Georgia case getting tossed today. So Georgia's falling apart. The case uh, here you were talking about here in Florida, which is the documents case, classified documents case, that's about to be dismissed. The J6 case is falling apart because Trump has been cleared by the FBI and everybody else for any wrongdoing on J6. And, you know, I know most of you guys know that, listen, regularly, Kathy and I live in Palm Beach. We live in, you know, same area as President Trump in in Mar-a-Lago, right? And I was on Instagram today. And you know how Instagram works, right? It, it gives you content based on your area. So uh, I got today, just just right before the podcast, I got a, a TikTok video about Howard Stern's mansion in Palm Beach, and his mansion has been valued at over five hundred million dollars. I'm sure it's smaller than Mar-a-Lago. It, everything's smaller than Mar-a-Lago. So that's insane. And uh, it was it's a whole it's a whole Instagram real story about. Howard Stern's mansion, which is beautiful. It was aerial views and everything. It's, it, it's, it's a little bit bigger than our house. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> like our house would probably fit in his bathroom or his closet. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But anyway, his house is valued over $500 million right now. And uh, it's, it's one of the 10 most uh, highly valued homes in all of Palm yeah. Beach. So if you're telling me Howard Stern's house is worth over half a billion dollars, but Mar-a-Lago is only worth yeah. 13 million, is that's that what insane. they said? Yeah, which, which is the home of a president of the United States on top of Mar-a-Lago, 
is the largest home that someone actually lives in in Florida. It's the you know, the largest home anyone lives in. So everything is falling apart. Now, I wanted to play this. I, I, wanna, I also think yeah. with TikTok, I think that um, the U.S. government sees maybe there's too much information getting out there and, and they don't, there's too, maybe too much conservative yeah. stuff or too much truth and they don't like don't that know. and they, they want to get control of that maybe. too. Maybe. So I wanted to play this. This is MSNBC. And this, I, I love how they, they're they doing this. So when the Georgia judge decision came down today, tossing out all the evidence against Trump. Oh, they must have lost it. Um, oh, no, not at all. Listen, so this is oh. them immediately reporting on it, MSNBC today. Potentially momentous decision or monumental decision that could completely derail the case altogether if – Judge Scott McAfee were to come out and say he's determined Fonnie Willis is disqualified. Yeah, you know, a couple of things. Absolutely, that's what we're still waiting on. And that was kind of the bomb that we were expecting to drop this week. And so, oh, they, oh, they were expecting this to happen this mm-hmm. week. They, oh, they're, they're, they, they're, they were expecting the phone that, call to get tossed. Give me a break. That's no, a bunch I, of BS. I don't think anyone was expecting No, that. nobody was. This is certainly a separate, uh, unexpected, though certainly consequential uh, ruling from the judge. A couple of things I want to point our attention to, though. When we talk about those six counts, remember, the former president was charged with 13 counts altogether. So for six of them to be dismissed, that takes takes away nearly half the counts that he's that he's facing in Georgia. But when you look at the judges breaking down of those those counts, I want to take you back to what started this whole thing in the beginning. It goes on. See, what they're trying to do is give hope that there's still something there. Yeah, all clinging to that. hope. All of those charges are are based on the evidence that they they put in there, which is that um, that phone call. Now, I want to tell you, which has been tossed out. So there's no case. Now this this was a uh, an interesting thing that happened here today at our house when I got home from the radio station. Now I've mentioned this, but not uh, I don't think we've talked about this maybe for a couple years, but be, it, it, it's had to be two years because it was right before the last election. You know, we have a guy that has a lawn crew who um, yeah. you know does our uh, mows our lawn and, and and stuff. And yeah, he's been with us for a while. Been with us for a, a few years, maybe three years. And for three, four years, this guy, maybe longer, maybe five. And during the last presidential election, um, we had a Make America Great Again flag Mm -hmm. hanging on our garage. Now, we no longer have that flag on our garage. Talked about this. Someone kidnapped our cat, never Mm -hmm. got her back. Ruby. Yep. And we put up missing cat photographs, uh, posters around the neighborhood. In and fact, I got, Emily was living here and, and and asked us to take the flag down. Yeah, and and she was really upset. One, one of the one of the people that I got a call from someone that told me they took our cat because of the yeah. MAGA flag. And I took the I took the MAGA flag off the garage uh, to protect our other animals from this liberal lunatic yeah. that and ourselves kidnapped our our <laughs> cat. And um, it, it's it's pretty upsetting. And we had that cat for many many years. In oh, fact, yeah. uh, we had they were two sisters. We had two cats. One died. We had her still, and then and then some. Cre- and I I still look for that cat. Um, I look under cars. Yeah, Ruby. It, Ruby. I look in windows when I'm driving through the neighborhood to see if I see her in a window. I've not been able to find her. It's been years. But anyway, well, our new cat um, Luna. Now Ruby used to would walk around the house a little bit. Like we'd let outside. her go out the dog yeah, she door. Was indoor outdoor cat. So we don't do that with Luna. Luna can, is not allowed outside. No, she totally goes inside. on the back porch. That's it. That's how, that's how liberals are. They're, they're yeah. terrible people. And, uh, but anyway, th- this is before all that happened. We had our make America great again flag on the flagpole on, mm-hmm. on our garage in the front of our house and our, uh, lawn guy. Now this was two years ago. This was the last election. So, <clears throat> You know, I come home from I come home from the radio station, and the lawn guy is usually here when he comes and mows the lawn about the time I get home. And uh, he comes up to me, and he was really pissed. And it, now he's he's an older guy. He's uh, he's African American. He's like seventy, right? He shouldn't be out mowing the lawn. He does. He, he rides. He the, owns the business. He rides the 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 riding mower, but it's it's Florida heat and everything. It, he shouldn't be doing it. right. Um. But he came up to me and he was pissed about the MAGA flag and and um, asked me about it and gave me a real hard time. And I said, he says, you, you you voting for Trump? And I said, yeah. And I mean, I got the flag on my house. I think it does, is it, what kind of is it kind of redundant question, obviously. 
And then he started telling me about the history of racism in this country. And um, I really didn't get into an um, an argument with him. I yeah, and and he lived through a lot of that. Like Brian said, he's like seventy well, years old. Everything this guy. he said was wrong, but I I, I just didn't feel like you know I, the guy Mose Arlan. I, I, I'm not interested in having a discussion with him about it. Quite honestly, you it know, it was really weird that he approached you like oh, about that for yeah. sure. And um, yeah, I just I, I thought it was so bizarre. But we still kept him mowing the lawn. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, we're, he, we're not gonna we he, we're not gonna like hurt his. He business was pissed. Or anything. He's like, you don't know. You know, you're not old enough to know what it was like and everything else and, and all this stuff. And he, I mean, he's completely, I mean, he, he doesn't even know what it was like because it was the Democrats, not the Republicans that were exactly. doing all the segregation and everything. So well, he, and he, he thinks you're younger than you are. I, I guess he does. But he, so he doesn't even know what yeah. it was like because he, he's totally off base. But I didn't feel like arguing with him. I had some right. words with him, you know, but I'm, I'm not interested in argue, having political discussions in my front yard with the guy that's mowing my lawn. Right. But ever since then, in the last two years, we really don't talk that much. I come home, I pay him, hey, how you doing? And that's it. We don't really talk. We even pay him more than he asked us to pay him. I gave because him, we didn't think he was asking enough. Yeah, well, so I we paid him a little more. I don't know how it is where you all are, but here in Florida, we have a lot of lawn crews yeah. in every oh, neighborhood. Yeah. They're almost all illegals, and he's an American guy. All the guys that work for him are American. Yeah, yeah. he doesn't use any illegals, yeah, and like and it. and he's he's it's hard for him because the illegals they pay nothing, so they can charge less. So he's charging a lot less than he should. I've I've upped what we pay him twice uh, yeah. without him asking or anything, and uh, it it blows him away that I do this. But but since we had this confrontation, I have given him two raises since this confrontation. Yeah. We don't talk that much. Right. And, and I've talked to him. He's and, very in nice. In fact, I pay him um, for a month at a time to avoid discussing things with him because I, I, first off, I thought he was out of line. I thought he had no, I thought he was way out of line. I agree. I mean, I wouldn't me. go up to somebody and, who was paying me for a service and just start a political argument. Yeah, yeah it's ridiculous. I think it's weird. And, uh, you know, but I pay him a month. I, when I see him, I pay him for a whole month. Right. So I don't have to see him except the 12 times a year, as opposed to every time he comes to the house. I don't have to talk to him. And today, um, this was very strange. And it, this blew me away. He um, he does Arlon and the lady next door. And... Um, he came up to me, he, and he turned on, and uh, usually he's sitting on the mower. I pay him. See ya next, next month. Right. This time he turned off the mower, mm. you know, and uh, he wears a mask uh, because of all the debris from the lawn work. He took off his mask and said, uh, so you're voting for Trump again? I oh said, yeah. Gosh. Yeah. And he says, well, I like a lot of the things he's saying. That's crazy. This is today when I got home. That's nuts. I said, yeah. I said, uh, I said, money's not going as far as it used to. He says, man, he says, you go to the grocery store, you, you put groceries in the cart. You don't even have it full. It's like $400. Yep. You know? And, it's uh, outrageous. And, and uh, I said, yeah. I said, everything's more expensive. He, and now and- it's upsetting because the Dollar Tree is closing a fat. We just talked about the well, Dollar let me, Tree. Let me finish with yeah. this. Because, so he told me he's voting for Trump. Yeah. And let me tell you, this guy, he's a black man who's in his 70s. He lived his entire life here in, in, in the South, here in, the in, South, in yeah. Florida. Yeah. This guy, he's not a registered Republican. He has never voted for a Republican in his life, and he's voting for Donald Trump. Yeah. Think and about he, that. Yeah. He's voting for Donald Trump. Also, yeah, it's yeah. going to happen all across the country. I mean, th- this, and this is the guy that confronted me in my own front line, trying to. Like, he was basically calling ago. me a Klansman. Yeah, you know, which you know, with a black child, all the Klansmen have black daughters. I exactly. guess exactly. It's, it's a common. You know, thing. they adopt black children. You know, and it was. It, it, <laughs> it, I was shocked when he asked me about Trump. I was thought. I, I thought to myself, Oh, great! Here, I just got. I just got home from the radio, arguing with these liberal jerks. Yeah. calling me. And I got to do this in my front yard again. And I was, I was like, here we go. I was in shock. Yeah, that is shocking. Isn't that amazing? He's a very nice man. He and I have had many conversations. And uh, he's a hard worker. That's not easy work. And we, we found him because he did our neighbor's lawn and, and our other lawn guy uh, left town or something. So we needed somebody. <laughs> no, he did. We needed somebody quick and he was out there. So we hired him. 
And he does our lawn and our neighbor's lawn at the same time. He's got a, a mow, a riding mower, and he, you know, he does, our a, last, he does a good job. Our last lawn guy did some work for someone in the neighborhood, got paid in advance, and he left town before he had Literally. to do the work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Without doing the work. Except I do have one quibble with our lawn guy. He keeps destroying our hoses. Yes, he does run over our hoses. <laughs> That's a problem. He runs over our no hoses No matter a lot. what we do, he ends up running them but, over somehow. But, you know, I've been telling people uh, this a lot lately, and, and this is, this is the, a, a thing you got to do. Do you know how hard it is for this lifelong Democrat black man from the deep south to vote Republican? You know, and I'm it, it, when it shouldn't be hard, though, because he's he's old enough to have been a see 70s, like around 70. Right. My my mom's 82. So he's you know, was born in 1952 around yeah. there, 1950, 50, between 50 and 55. So he was a kid mm-hmm. when all the segregation and all this stuff. He's old enough to know that the Klan were all Democrats. He doesn't know. And that Republic and that Martin Luther King was originally a Republican. Frederick Douglass was a Republican. Harriet Tubman was a Republican, even though she couldn't vote, but that was her party. Yeah. He's old enough to know that. So it should not be a hard thing for him to do. And I guess his whole decision is based on economics, but he did say he likes the things he's saying. And I think that really goes to sometimes Trump slips back into his old ways, which I don't mind. But I think he is more laser focused on the issues yeah. than the, than the well, name calling but, and all that stuff. I, I don't, And I don't think it's because he feels it's bad. I really feel that Trump sees the country in serious peril. Yeah. And he is very worried about it. He loves his country. Yeah. It's afforded him every opportunity. He has met so many people from all walks of life. And I think he really feels the country's in danger. And he is it like, is. I am the only guy who can fix this. That's right. And I think he is just laser focused on that right now. And mm-hmm. and and I think people can see it. And like I said, the Dollar Tree just closed a thousand stores. That is really bad. We just talked about yesterday how a, how the Dollar Tree was really helping families to feed their kids because food is so expensive. Mm-hmm. Children are going to go hungry now. In the, now. It's already happening, but more children are going to go hungry now because the Dollar Trees are closing. They were really filling a gap and helping families make it through this. Well, you know, the thing so about I'm very the Dollar Trees, about that. you know, um, and I just want one last thing on the, on the long guy, then we'll talk about that. You know, this guy, he remembers that confrontation he had yep. with me. And even though he remembers that, he still told me that today. Yep. And can you imagine this wave of people that are – so that, 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 incredible. This is what I've been telling people. When you have a Democrat like I did today who yeah. tells you they're voting for Trump, don't start arguing with them about these other issues and alienate them. Let no. them vote for Trump. Let them vote for Trump. No, just ask don't, them. Don't start questioning them about this or that or telling them no, their history. But I would, and I, no, I wouldn't do that either. But I would ask them – um, you know, I would say I'm curious what changed your mind. Well, that's mind. what I said. I said things were exp- uh, expensive. And right. It's like, yes. You know, and see what they saying. say. And just like Brian now, said, just let them talk. And, you know. Now, this thing about the dollar stores closing, you know, and we were talking about this on the last two podcast episodes. I was telling you guys that there's this new niche on YouTube that I got recommended. I don't yeah. know why I got recommended, but it's it's um, it's women who are getting by on very little money, feeding their families by yep. shopping at Dollar it's Tree. Big on TikTok too, and uh, yeah, it's on. Yeah, and uh, I was talking to Richie, the bus driver. He called me on the radio this morning, and I'd mentioned this too. We were talking about inflation, and what what uh, what's happening with American families with children. It, uh, mothers are having a difficult time. It's it's like the Great Depression. They're feeding their kids yes. like mothers did during the Great Depression. Yeah. And you know this thing uh, over a thousand dollar store tree stores are, are going to be closing. And that just B- really makes me so Biden, upset. Biden and, and and by the way, it's not just the people that can't buy the 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 cheap stuff there to feed their families. It's the people that work there too. Sure. Biden, you figure each one employs at least fifteen. Biden people. doesn't care. OK, if the brothels and, and, and you know, started closing down, then him and Hunter, be you know, because Hunter would be upset. But but this this is the thing. I hope that Dollar Tree can hang hang on a little bit without shutting these yeah. down. If Trump were in office right now and this story broke, what Trump would do is have the executives from Dollar Tree come to the White House. Absolutely. And talk to them about how they can save their company, because not just the jobs it provides, but the service of low incomes 
low-income food and other things that they sell well, to the community. If Trump was in office, there would be no need to buy food at the Dollar Tree. No, that's true. But if this, that's true. <laughs> you know, but, but he would, he but would you're save right. them. He would bring the CEOs. He did that often. He brought the CEOs of companies uh, to to the White House to discuss things. And this is what's so sad is nobody, once Trump is out of office, nobody's going to run the country like him. It's it, I'm Never so again. afraid it's going to go back again. to business as usual. These people in the government don't know what they're doing and they're corrupt. And I don't understand why the Democratic Party just can't do a good job and be like they were, you know, back in the 60s and 70s. And and inst instead of becoming so radicalized and embracing all these illegals, yeah. you're going to talk about a story that happened locally. Well, let's do that after the yeah. break. OK, we're going to take our first break. and. A major tragedy has happened in Florida involving the southern border. And, and of course, Ron DeSantis is checked out and not talking about it. We're going to get into that and a whole bunch more. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll be back right after this. Are you feeling stuck in your career? Would you like to grow, get promoted, and make more money, but you don't know how to make yourself stand out? There's a course at Udemy.com that can help you achieve your career goals. Knowledge management, acquire and manage knowledge to excel. This course isn't just about theories. It's a roadmap to understanding and implementing knowledge management in the digital economy. In this course, you'll learn from over 35 real-world examples and gain practical, actionable insights to boost your career immediately. No prior experience is needed. Whether you're at an early, mid, or mid-senior level in your career, or a student ready to enter the job market, this course is tailored for you. With knowledge management, acquire and manage knowledge to excel on Udemy.com, you'll discover the foundation and importance of knowledge management. You'll learn how to leverage organizational knowledge and even explore successful business models to kickstart your own business. So stop scrolling through search engines. Stop feeling overwhelmed. Stop feeling frustrated. This course cuts through all the noise and provides you with all authentic content on knowledge management strategies and tools. This is your opportunity to stand out. Go to Udemy.com and search knowledge management, acquire and manage knowledge to excel and propel your career forward and unlock the keys to success in the digital era. What are you waiting for? Go right now to Udemy.com and search knowledge management, acquire and manage knowledge to excel and access the course today. The new graphic novel from author Earl Tamuramaro is now available on Amazon, Border Barrier. Set on a remote international moon base, Border Barrier takes you on a journey of scientific marvels and dark secrets. Join American theorist Dr. Virgil G.V. as he embarks on a top secret project that could alter the course of humanity. With the discovery of a mysterious substance, Virgil develops an AI program to unlock its secrets. But the moon base is not just a hub of discovery, it's a web of enigma and potential dangers. In a place where allies and adversaries are indistinguishable, Virgil faces the ultimate test. Unraveling the truth behind the origin of the substance becomes a race against time, with the fate of mankind hanging in the balance. Border Barrier is a sci-fi mystery, a tale of intrigue and survival, where trust is a luxury and every decision could be the difference between salvation and catastrophe. Order your copy right now, available in Kindle, paperback, and Kindle Unlimited. Border Barrier. From author Earl Tamuramaro, available on Amazon. Fashion makes a statement about your identity, your personal style, and it tells people who you are. When you're shopping for clothes for any occasion and incredible jewelry, there's only one place you need to shop, and that's FashionFeminina.com. FashionFeminina.com is where elegance meets contemporary style. When you visit the store, explore their stunning collection of activewear, blouses, dresses, denim, and jackets. FashionFeminina.com is your one-stop destination for every occasion work, travel, or a special night out. Find luxury jewelry to go with your clothing. They have exquisite rings, elegant earrings, and stunning necklaces that add a touch of glamour to any outfit. Also, check out their new arrivals so you can find the latest trends and inventory, as well as the must-have pieces. And right now, FashionFeminina.com is offering 10% off when you purchase two or more items. And they have free worldwide delivery, including in the United States. That's right, free shipping. Founded with a love of fashion and a vision for unique elegance. 
elegance. FashionFeminina.com has grown from a quaint boutique to a fashion and jewelry paradise. Start shopping right now at FashionFeminina.com and redefine your style today. You'll find great gifts too. FashionFeminina.com, where elegance and fashion unite. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Okay, so here in Palm Beach County, which is, of course, the county where President Trump lives and Mm -hmm. where Kathy and I live, the sheriff of Palm Beach County, I just came across, this just got um, popped up on my news wire today, uh, this morning, mm-hmm. uh, in the local news. And I have not seen this in the national news yet, but this is a, um, this is a pretty big, big story. Th- three illegals from Guatemala committed just a horrific crime. And I mean, let me just share this with you. Um, you know, the President Trump, he says this migrant crime wave, and that's really a mild way to put it. But let me let me share this with you. The Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office said, and they list the three um, illegals, uh, Andres Morales, Darinel Ramirez, Marcos Ramirez, all from Guatemala, and they're illegally in this country. Uh, they came through the southern border and made their way to Florida. They abducted a woman. At 1 a.m. Monday in a residential area um, just west of Interstate 95 in Lake Worth, this is just a few minutes south of Mar-a-Lago. And um, on my way to the radio station in the morning, I drive uh, right through this area. Uh, The three illegals sexually battered the woman at two separate locations. Felipe Morales is facing charges of sexual assault and false imprisonment. The others are being held on two counts of federal, uh, I'm sorry, of felony criminal conspiracy. Um, And the sheriff, who I believe is a Democrat. He is. Is he a Democrat? Yeah, that's what it said on his website. He's he's an older guy. Um, He's been sheriff here in this county for many, many 20 years. years. He's been in law enforcement 50 years. Yeah, so. his, his name is, is Sheriff Bradshaw, and he gave a press conference today. I wanted to play a little bit of it. And this, this press conference, I want you guys to understand, mm-hmm. this guy's Donald Trump sheriff. Yeah. He is Donald Trump's county sheriff. And he's sheriff. a Democrat. And uh, he's, he had a press conference today. It was about this incident with these three illegals from Guatemala mm-hmm. who kidnapped and raped this woman, not far from Mar-a-Lago. In a nice neighborhood, yeah, by the way. Yeah, a nice yeah. suburban neighborhood, not, yeah, you know, in a yeah. big city here. Yeah, this was not some- Like Lake Worth. This was, um, the, 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 uh, they, they abducted her from a park, and it's a, it's a, it's a pretty nice area it's, yeah. it, it, where kids play and everything, not at 1 a.m. when they abducted her, but they, they still, you know. So this is the uh, sheriff of our county, the, President Trump's own sheriff, mm-hmm. Uh, talking about this incident, and this should be national news, but you know the media. This morning, I'm just here to deliver a message, and the message is, don't think for a minute that what happens at the Mexican border doesn't affect us here. Here you have three illegals that should have never been in this country that have committed a very serious crime, kidnapping and sexual battery of a lady. They shouldn't be here. This is the same thing that we saw where the student was killed by the person that was here illegally. Lake and Riley. That's why we pay so much attention. Folks, our border is the ocean. There's no fence there. We are the fence. That's why we spend as much time as we do and dedicate resources to stopping people before they get here. In all likelihood, these three people came through Mexico. They didn't come through here. I can tell you that for sure. We would have checked in our database. But for them to be in this country, to be able to commit these type of crimes is unconscionable. The federal government has put the American people in jeopardy. Our intelligence section, who works very closely with the FBI, has also identified that the most dangerous gangs in the world 
or now in Miami from Venezuela. Oh, my goodness. I mean, this is nuts. And I just read an article today in the Daily Mail that Venezuela is releasing another hundred murderers out of their prisons. Oh, great. And that they are expecting them to head right for yeah, the border. They'll probably here. them first That's class. That's what Trump said. Here. They're they're sending people out of their jails. Well, and you people know, people are finally realizing this is true. And so the sher- our, our local sheriff, President Trump's local sheriff, is saying, talk about these gangs in Venezuela, these violent gangs. If you remember when those uh, illegal Venezuelans beat up those cops in New York, the New York Police Department, they were saying these. Um, these criminals, they live in Florida. They come to New York to do crime because they, they, they have no bail. They do crime in New York. If they right. get caught, they get out, they come back to Florida. They make MS-13 look like school kids. Now, now let me tell you, um, he's talking about the gangs here in Miami. Yeah, that's scary. Um, the way it works here, uh, what, what's going on here, okay, the, these, these criminal gangs, they don't just go to New York. They do crimes in other parts of Florida, and what they 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 leave the county. Miami is its own county. Okay, they leave Miami. Mm-hmm. They come north to Palm Beach because you know where Donald Trump and Howard Stern live, right? Howard Stern's in a half a billion dollar mansion. That's where the money is. They come up here in our community and right. do crime because that's where the money is, right? Remember, um, years ago, then they go back to Miami. There was a, a series of murders at the Boca Mall, which is near our house. And this was a big story here. And people were getting killed in the parking lot, getting kidnapped. It happened like to three or four people at the Boca Mall, which is a very high-end mall. I mean, it's got Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Versace, everything. And they found the person that did it lived in Miami. And they came up here and committed those crimes. And then they go back. They don't necessarily live in your neighborhood. And where's DeSantis? DeSantis has abandoned us. He has abandoned us. Yeah, he has. You know, what Florida, you know, because I was was talking to people today. He just lost the don't say gay thing. Bill, you know, he just lost that in court, DeSantis. What do you mean? I I don't want to get into that, but he lost that case. I talked about it on the show this morning, but um, Florida is falling apart. We Florida has deteriorated in the last year. And well, you, this is scary. What have, this guy's saying. We have a, the, we have gangs. According to our to Donald Trump's local sheriff, we have gangs more dangerous than MS13 in our community. And Ron DeSantis doesn't doesn't care. I mean, well, you know the Florida coast is huge. I mean, it's big, probably as big a Cal, as California, if not bigger, because it's a peninsula and yeah. it goes around the whole the state on both sides. Right. And he's right. We don't have a fence or any kind of structure at all along our state. So I'm glad they have a fence or they're putting one up and Greg Abbott has the razor wire and all this stuff and they're doing what they can there. But we can't put a fence around Florida. Well, what he means, <laughs> so, no, no, no. What he means by that is because we're surrounded um, by ocean on three sides. Or peninsula, they're bringing them here from the southern border. Well, that's, that's what why, I was going to say. That's why he's saying that. I was going to say, so now I'm concerned – because Florida is now in play for these people, and it's very vulnerable. They, well, they've taken it over, according to yeah. I mean, it was Trump's not. Sheriff. It was always an issue here, but not like now. Now it's because of the because Abbott is trying to stop things in Texas, and which he should. They're finding other ways to get into the country, yeah. and we're having more of an issue in Florida than we normally do. There's yeah. always people that come here from Haiti and Cuba and all that. That's been like that since I was a kid. But now this talk of gangs, this is kind of new here. This is the, like, at this level, it is. I, yeah, I at know, this level. So I'm saying yeah. I've never really heard that before. On the I've, not, I've not heard anyone. In, I've not heard any official in Florida no. say that we have these Venezuelan gangs in such large numbers. Never more dangerous than MS-13 in our community. They're not going to stay just in Miami. They're going to go where they need to go to do what they do. They don't know if it's Dade, Broward, Palm Beach County. They just go to do what they're going to do, and we're going to have to deal with them. You know, the, forget about the three million people that came across the border, put their hands up to Border Patrol and says, I give up. You know, they get the cell phone and the gift card and all that kind of garbage. What about the 1.5 million people that they call gotaways? Those are the people that don't want to go to get caught by Border Patrol because they're cartel, they're gang members, they're wanted. They're packing fentanyl. I watched a surveillance video that was taken down in Texas of 10 guys, military age, dressed in camouflage, backpacks. They had 
carpet on their shoes so they didn't leave footprints in a military formation coming into the country. What do you think they're here for? They're not here to play the lotto. They're going to do bad things. The director of the FBI testified that it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when we're going to have something bad happen here. Because in the 1.5 million gotaways, he's worried that there's people from ISIS, people from the terrorist watch list that could be in the United States. Our agency is still the lead agency for Homeland Security for all of South Florida. And every three months we have a meeting to make sure that we're going to be operationally ready for whatever might happen here in South Florida. But people have to pay attention. We need the help of the public also. Our program, if you know something or see something. Okay. I mean, and I got to tell you, you know, our governor, Ron DeSantis, is a joke. He's totally abandoned us. By the way, we have this big measles outbreak here because, you know, this. Yeah, and they just determined it was on the news today that they traced the outbreak to migrants. Yeah. Illegal migrants. The plague is. is, is Yeah, the this, plague was in New Mexico this, last week. This violent crime thing right here, like, Kathy, I would not. With Now that we have these violent yeah. Venezuelan gangs more violent than MS-13, they're in our community to yeah. do crime. Then they go back to Miami. I wouldn't. Li- if our daughter was was um, here with us, yeah. I wouldn't let her go to the mall by herself. I mean, she might be safer in L.A. Yeah, she would be. Yeah, <laughs> I would. Right I would. Now. I would. Uh, I go. And let me tell you, yeah, this, and we live in a safe neighborhood, this, and I wouldn't even. I wouldn't feel comfortable this, going out. This woman by that was abducted and raped by these illegals lived in a nice, safe neighborhood too, until it wasn't. And mm. that this woman that was abducted and raped here in Ron DeSantis's Florida that we're talking about here. Just like Lincoln Riley and these others, these women have been raped and killed because direct actions of Joe Biden. This and he is doesn't happening. Care. It shouldn't be happening at all, but it is happening way too often. Um, well, none of them should happen. No, none of them should happen. I agree. These are preventable crimes. And I love how liberals justify it. Well, people get killed every day. And by that, legal you know, people. Yeah. yeah, but this is something you can prevent. Obviously, you have a serial killer or somebody who rapes women and stuff and they live here. And they're a citizen. You can't. You, this isn't Minority Report. You don't know what they're going to do and can't go out and get them ahead of time. But these are crimes that are preventable. Correct. And we can prevent them. And I, I don't. <laughs> if they're going to lose the election so bad, it's going to be a beautiful thing to see because people, because Biden is refusing, refusing to do anything. That's right. They just said on the news the other day that inflation is up 4.7%. It's the highest it's ever been, the biggest jump. And and now you got the thing with the Dollar Tree. People, I, I think we're in a getting heading to a depression. I really do. I think it's happening. It's going to happen. And I think by the time the election comes around, if things don't change, I mean, you know, you can't buy a car right now. People can't afford homes right now. They can't afford food right now. I mean, I, th- this Dollar Tree story really just upset me because I really think about all those really poor families that yeah. rely on that food. And it's not the greatest food, but it's still food. And and what are they going to do? Now, we donate to, there's a local food bank, the Treasure Coast Food Bank, and I donate to them every month. And if you have a food bank in your, there's things you can do. There's certain charities I donate to. I donate to about five. I donate to the Shriners, the uh, Tunnel to Towers. Wounded Warrior, the Treasure Coast Food Bank, and then one other one. I give each of them like 50 bucks. And if you can find a charity, if you have extra money, especially like a food bank, um, please, or, or go and give them food. Take food out of your account. There are things you can do if you have the ability to do it and you have a little extra People are really going to be going hungry, and it's it's a problem. And children, and if you can call your news or call your local food bank or something, call your church. Um, our friend Trevor, Pastor Trevin, has a church in Vero Beach. He just started a food bank at his church. He said it's been very successful, and you can donate food, donate money, you know, help some way. That's what we're supposed and to I, do. And I'll tell you, though, you know what, the, Kathy? As Christians, is we're supposed to help each other. And I'll tell you who's not going to go hungry, and those are the illegals because they give them the EBT cards and they refill Sickening. them every month. Now, I want to um, uh, take a moment to thank our Patreon supporters. Um, you know, some of you Patreon supporters have been with this program since mm-hmm. the beginning, and I want to thank all of you. 
and if you would like to support the program by becoming a Patreon supporter, there's a link in the description of this and every episode. Uh, and of course, Patreon supporters have access to commercial-free editions of all of our podcast episodes. And our top Patreon supporters get a live on-air thank you shout out on each and every podcast episode. So the names you'll hear now are our top Patreon supporters. I want to thank Andrew and Connie, Christine, ETW, Chuck, D, Pamela, Rick, Nick, Wesley, Macho, Mike P, Carlos, Paulette, John, Arctic Fox, Heather, David, Maria in Texas, Richard, Alice, K Mac, Lee Zepp, Shauna, Constance, and George. These are our top Patreon supporters. Thank you so much. Again, there's a link in the uh, episode description. If you uh, if you click that link, it'll take you to our Patreon page, and uh, you can become a Patreon supporter. Yes, and thank you, Patreons. And I want to say one more thing about the Dollar Tree. It was just on the news. The Dollar Tree is closing these stores because they said their 2023 expenses were more than they thought they'd be. That's from Biden inflation. Yep. And now they said some of the items in their stores are going to be as much as $7. So it's no longer the Dollar Tree. Remember when they made everything a dollar fifty a couple years ago? Now they said some items will be $7. You might as well go shop at Target or Walmart yeah. for that, you know. And, uh, you know, yeah. I, I, it's really, it's there's things you can do, okay, like to save money. If you really are struggling, like Walmart, if you, uh, they price their meats based on the date. So if the, if the meat has one day left on its expiration, they reduce the price. So you can go and buy meat. And if you cook it that day, though, you know, you don't want to keep it around. Uh, so you want to get ground beef. I mean, there the, people are outraged. One guy put on um, TikTok uh, his receipt from five, five Guys Burgers, which I think Five Guys sucks, by the way. Their fries are greasy. Um, but he ordered a plain burger, fr small fries, and a drink. It was $26. And young people are really upset over the cost of, ground, of, of hamburgers. Yeah. Apparently, the cost of hamburgers has really gone through the roof. And I, and I don't know if it's that the meat is more money or that these restaurants are inflating the cost to cover their other expenses. But I remember as a kid at Winn-Dixie or Public State have these huge tubes of ground beef. Do you remember those? Mm -hmm. I don't even know if they sell those anymore. And they were like five pounds of ground beef and you could get it for like 10 bucks. And my mom would be like, that's really good for like a big family. It's real. You can make a lot of meals out of that. Mm -hmm. And now people are just struggling uh, with just ground beef, which is always supposed to be the most inexpensive form of beef, you know, to help people have some well, look beef at, in look their at, diet. Look at how, and now they can't even Kathy, afford look that. At, look at how stupid these Democrats are. They're trying to uh, cause. Uh, I think they're trying to get the country to collapse. They're trying to really do for China. They're trying to put on the beef industry all this climate crap to drive up the cost of hamburger. I think they're trying to make the country collapse because China's paying them to do it. Yep. And this is all part of it. And and the and and they have yep. to break the country to and and cut it off at the knees. Mm -hmm in order for China to come in and take over. And I really think that's what they're trying well, to do. Well, listen, we're going to take our last break. When we get back, don't go anywhere. There's there's a lot more to cover. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. We'll be right back. Podcast listeners, are you looking for a fresh new podcast? Then add Journeyman Commentator to your podcast playlist right now. Hosted by the hilariously insightful Andrew Self. Journeyman Commentator is a twist on sports podcast. Andrew covers the world of English soccer with wit and humor that's simply unmatched. You'll be hooked from the very first episode. Andrew shares his thoughts and the hilarious stories about his travels to and from the matches. Each episode is a blend of sports, laughter, and unforgettable commentary. Journeyman Commentator is available on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and wherever you get your podcast. It's perfect to listen to on your way to or home from work. Share the podcast on all your social media so your friends can add Journeyman Commentator to their playlist too. Journeyman Commentator with host Andrew Self. Start listening right now. Thank you. 
Journey to the Heart of Texas with Echoes of Grace from author Roxy Curry. In this deeply personal memoir, the author shares her story of faith, challenges, and the transformative path to healing. Roxy's journey leads to unexpected places, but through it all, God's grace shines like a bright light, providing direction and comfort. Echoes of Grace is a testament that even when our choices deviate from the planned path, grace is a constant presence. In Echoes of Grace, the author unveils vulnerabilities and strength, and also celebrates Celebrates self-discovery. It's about accepting imperfections, finding strength within, and embracing every aspect of who she is, the good, the tough, and everything in between. Echoes of Grace illuminates the incredible power of faith and God's enduring grace. Echoes of Grace from author Roxy Curry is available on Amazon in Kindle, paperback, hardcover, and Kindle Unlimited. Echoes of Grace from author Roxy Curry. Order your copy right now on Amazon. The new book from author Roxy Curry is now available on Amazon. Should I stay or should I go? Your faith-based guide to overcoming narcissistic relationships. Guided by her unwavering light of faith and personal wisdom, the author's goal for this book is to help you navigate the confusion and pain caused by covert narcissists, especially within the context of Christian values. Author Roxy Curry draws from her personal struggles, offering hard-earned insights that empower readers to make pivotal choices between enduring during the storm or seeking a new beginning. And should I stay or should I go? Perseverance, faith, and actionable advice converge to guide you through the challenges of a narcissistic relationship. In this must-read book, you'll learn how to identify the imperceptible chains that narcissists craft through manipulation and their force of personality, as well as how these bonds can be shattered by the hammers of prayer, self-reflection, and empowered courage. Author Roxy Curry's first book, Echoes of Grace, was her memoir that chronicled her personal struggles and successes. At its heart lies a complex relationship with Victor, testing her beliefs and resilience. Through her unwavering faith, she emerged with a renewed sense of self and a profound understanding of God's grace. Should I Stay or Should I Go? Your faith-based guide to overcoming narcissistic relationships from author Roxy Curry is available on Amazon in Kindle, paperback, and hardcover. Order your copy right now and reclaim your faith, your courage, and your self-worth. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. So Don Lamont is coming back. The uh, Don Lamont Show premieres March 18th. On X, Twitter X. I call it Twitter X. I like Twitter X. I think Twitter X is cool. On X, uh, YouTube, and all podcast platforms, okay? And he released a video today, and it shows you what a nutcase he is. Don Lemon is nuts. And he, he had problems with everyone he worked at. Apparently, he did an interview with Elon Musk. Something happened. That caused he, he Don Lemon was working out a deal with X to have a program set up and a deal set up like Tucker Carlson has whatever that He's no Tucker whatever Carlson. that means I don't know what that means but that's the thing to do interviews I guess or well I don't know he was working out a deal he said he had a deal I don't know what that means mm. but um he interviewed Elon Musk and something happened in the course of that interview that resulted in X pulling the deal with Don Lamont and Don Lamont made a video that he uploaded to Twitter today. Let me just play this for you. And he's, he's talking a little bit about it. Hi everyone. Elon Musk is mad at me. And I just put out a statement about what happened between him, me and the interview that he is apparently so upset about, but make no mistake about this. This is going to be my first episode of the Don Lemon show this coming Monday, March 18th. So make sure you tune in. This does not change anything about the show except for my relationship with Elon and X. And there, there's a whole lot that went down and I'm going to tell you about in the coming days. I know though that many of you were not happy that I was doing this in the first place and you told me so. 
I just want you to know that I did this deal because not only do I believe in free speech, but I believed that this was the best possible chance for the work that I'm doing to reach the largest amount of people. So speaking of free speech, right, I thought the first person interview, no brainer, Elon Musk, the man who calls himself a free speech absolutist. I asked him to do it. He willingly agreed to the interview. Throughout our conversation, I kept reiterating to him that although it was tense at times, I thought it was good for people to see and hear our exchange and that they would learn from our conversation, learn more about him, learn more about me. But apparently, free speech absolutism doesn't apply when it comes to questions about him from people like me. What did we talk about? Why is he so upset? Does he even have a reason to be upset? Make sure you watch it on Monday on YouTube and everywhere you listen to podcasts, and you can decide for yourself. You can even watch it on X because I'm still going to post it there, and I'm sure others will as well. Okay. Okay. I just want a couple things about Don Lamont here with, the, with this whole deal. First of all, I, I, he must have asked or said something to Elon Musk that was incredibly inappropriate and offensive. We also, well, not all. We, I, I mean, I support free speech. Conservatives support free speech. But that doesn't mean that you support people asking you inappropriate things and saying inappropriate right. things to you, right? You can say that doesn't mean you don't, you know, you know what I, you understand what I mean? But Don Lamont is going to fail, okay? He's a bit of a freak show. We'll tune in to that first show to find out, you know, what, what happened. The reason Tucker Carlson is breaking records with his interviews, with the number of views, is because he's telling the truth. And he's telling a truth that's suppressed everywhere else. Don Lemon is a liberal jerk, and that those viewpoints are represented everywhere. And the only the only possible thing about Don Lemon's new show that might make it interesting is the train wreck factor that he's obviously insane. And now that he has no handlers and no bosses, and he's on his own, you can see how crazy he is. And and people might it's like the View. People might watch it to see how nuts he is. But I, I, I don't think it's going to be interesting what, what, or exciting. No. And, and I don't think anybody's so going to care or watch it. I really no, don't. He, so he interviews people, and he's going to interview them just like everyone else is doing on MSNBC or CNN. It's, it's, it's going to fail. So yeah. I'm, I'm not, But I do want to find out about what happened with him and Elon Musk. Well, here's an article. I'm going to give it to you right now. Um, well, just tell me about it. You don't have to give it to me. Okay. It's in the New York Post. Uh, let's see. I got to get it to come on my Yeah, so Don Lemon's going to fail. No one's interested in in Don Lemon. I mean, you know, come on. We if, if you want to hear that viewpoint, just turn on CNN any day of the week and you'll get that. Tucker, you don't get that anywhere else, okay, on TV. So this is an interesting thing today because even the Democrats are involved in this this TikTok banning, right? A lot of Democrats voted for it today in the House. Some influencers, TikTok influencers, now keep in mind the Biden White House is supporting the banning of TikTok, right? Those are the Chinese influence. Some influencers came forward, TikTok influencers, and let it be known that they were contacted by the White House to um, – Promote the State of the Union of Biden's last week. Listen of to course. this. I mean, play, this is like I know a, a few that do it. This I've is seen a them. yeah. This is a montage of a, a few different TikTok influencers talking about it. Joe Biden invited seventy influencers to view his State of the Union address in order to. I was one of the seventy influencers that was invited. So let me spill the tea with you. So I got this message. I want to say on Monday night. Mm. So I got an email from an agency. And I saw the people that were CC'd on, and I didn't recognize any of the other email addresses that were CC'd onto this invite. So essentially, they were like, we'd love to have you at this, like, watch party, blah, blah, blah. But they just said it was like a watch party for the state of union address, blah, 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 whatever it's called. So I'm not super political on this platform for one reason. I care about work-life balance. I care about employee conditions while they're working, right? That typically doesn't really have a political party attack. Okay. I'm not going to throw that, but now this is an interesting— they're advocating, openly advocating through passing legislation that's, that's, that was, it was passed in the House today to ban something that they're actively using. So what's that at the about? Same that time? doesn't make sense. Um, I don't know. You know, the, it, it could it could possibly be this. OK, it, it, and this is what my I, we don't know, but this would be my guess. Mm -hmm. OK, and, and, and this is why I share this. So the Biden White House is actively supporting legislation to ban TikTok. Mm -hmm. Legislation passed in the House today. Many Democrats voted with the backing of Biden's people. But yet 
the Biden White House is also using TikTok influencers to promote the State of the Union. Confusing. Well, this this is what happens yeah. when you have a country that's not being governed by a president. That's true. The gov- I've been telling you guys this for three years. This is very frightening. The United States, obviously Obama's running things, but since he's not the president uh, legally and he's not at the White House, he can't run it like he would if he was really president in the White House. Right. The country, he's in, he does big picture things. Big picture things that have to be done. He has things that are important to him that he's well, running. Big, the border mainly. Big thing. The border. Brainwashing you, children. Ukraine. You know. Yeah. But the government, the federal government, the country is being run by independent people that have their own little territory, right? That's true. The military is running themselves. The State Department's running themselves. The, the the communications department where Jean Pierre works, they're running themselves. Too many chiefs, not enough Indians. They're all so there's all these say. chiefs with these little tribes inside yeah. the government yeah. that are doing their own thing. Right. There's no There's there, no one in charge. There's no one in charge. Basically. That's correct. The yeah, country there's no one in charge. This this country Biden's at the beach. This country is being run it's a, basically an anarchy. There's no there's is. there is not a functioning government. In the United States right now, no. and there hasn't been for three years. It's getting worse every day. Now, the only reason that the country is safe right now is because the world knows that it's Donald Trump's coming. coming back. That's exactly right. And they know that if they pull something yep. when Trump's back in January, they're in trouble. So God help not us doing if anything. Biden wins. And let me tell oh. you, I do not understand these Democrats that call you and they just harp on the same talking points. It's like talking to a wall. You just cannot get through to these people. And I don't understand how they can't see what's happening. Like even our lawn man who gave you a hard time about Trump, even he is like waking up. This is a guy mm-hmm. who did not like Trump at all. Hated enough him. enough to the point where he approached you about this. And we haven't You're, talked to him. guy employing him. Yeah. And now he brought it up to you again and he's been red pilled because even he sees what the hell, that the world is a mess the world is on fire right now. And now you got Haiti going crazy. The reason these countries are falling apart is because there's no moral compass. Yeah. Okay. There's no, like my cousin in Canada, my cousin, Heather, she came down, she has a house down here and she comes down for the winter. And we were talking and she's the one who told me she went to China 10 years ago and her tour guide said China wants to take over the world. And she said to me in that same conversation, she said, you know, she said, I, and she's Canadian, grew up there. She said, I hate to think what the world would be like without the United States. And she said, it terrifies me to think that if this country collapsed, what would happen to the rest of us? Mm -hmm. And she's right. The United States, as as, all these liberals hate us, but let me tell you something. If there was no United States intact, do you know what the world would be like? It's you're ha- it's happening now. You're seeing it because there's no real government running the country. There's no real leader. Yeah. So all these countries are going to hell, even worse than they, they normally are, because there's no fear of America getting involved to stop it. You understand what I'm saying? Now mm-hmm. Haiti's a mess. It's always been a mess down there, but now it's really bad. It's being overrun. By these gangs, they killed the one president. They got a new guy in. They're running around with machine guns do you know everywhere. What the, do you know what the it's name? It's terrifying. The the new prime minister of Haiti. That's well, he's the prime minister this afternoon. Who knows? Yeah, tomorrow. exactly. You know what his name is? No, barbecue. Yeah, barbecue. Okay. That's his name. Okay, well, I'm serious. It's I'm just, not kidding. It's just crazy. Well, it's, you know, it's terrifying. So, so but you're right. The thought of Trump possibly winning, which yeah. we know he will. Hopefully, as it gets closer and closer, it is, keeps the world in check. And yeah. in, and it's also uh, it's holding the economy together. Yeah, I, I think it has more too. of an impact on us. So than anybody. Yeah. you know, the, with what we're seeing today, are that that what we talked about on just this show, my lawn man that hate, hated Trump that I haven't really talked to in three years. Yeah, three years. I didn't realize it's been that long. Really, it's been like four years yeah. almost. Yeah, other than, I didn't realize you know, it's been that long. Money for the month. I said two years when we were talking about it in the first segment. It's yeah. been like four years almost. Yeah. Three and a half years. We haven't really talked to it. Um, the, our, our local sheriff here, right? You know, what, what you see going on around the country. Yeah, both Democrats. And, and for people out there that worry about things, oh, they'll do what they did. Do you, you guys got to understand, last night, President Trump won the nomination of the Republican Party. He's got the delegates now. 
He has defeated the entire machine of the Uniparty to get this nomination. First, they had DeSantis. Then they had, you know, Nikki Haley. It's incredible. They, they spent hundreds of millions of dollars yeah. this year, hundreds of millions, many hundreds of millions of dollars uh, to do everything they could do That's to right. defeat this guy. And he beat them all. You know why? Why? Because he has God on his side. That's right. That's why. He has and God on his side. You, you guys hear me. Anytime I've seen President Trump in person during these inauguration day or at Mar-a-Lago uh, a couple weeks ago, he totally stress-free. Yeah. You can see it in his body language. Totally stress I think free. he's, I've said this before. I think he's, his wife's very religious. They're Episcopal. Melania? She's religious. She's, I didn't realize she, she was very religious. She's, oh yeah. She's really? very religious. Yeah. And uh, they're, she's Episcopalian. She's Anglican. You know, I've never seen her in, um, I, you know, I, I shouldn't say I've not seen but her But I think person. Trump's I've, more religious seen, than people realize. I've, I think he has a lot of faith. I really do. I've seen her in The Beast. Like when I've seen Trump in the Beast and he's in front of the window, I've seen her in the in in the background, but I've never really seen her in in yeah. um, in, in person up close. But you're you're right. Trump is very religious too, and yeah, I think he's and he and you know this shows you the power of prayer. How many people pray for this man and his family oh, yeah. on a nightly basis? Millions, yeah, millions of people pray for this it's man. Amazing. I pray for the president. I know Brian does. I know you guys do. That is the power. Of prayer, he's being protected. He is being protected by God, and I know liberals will think I'm crazy, but that's okay. They they don't have the Holy Spirit in them, so they they don't get it. Mm -hmm. But he is being protected by the Almighty. I I know that because there are too many things. There's there's these evil. Look at Liz Cheney. Her father is a war criminal, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, how many men were killed or maimed? Mm -hmm. Because he started a fake war, a, another Vietnam that never should have happened. And she's got the nerve to go on TV yeah. and alter evidence and make Trump out and try to put Trump in jail. Yeah. She's a sick woman. Yeah. She's a, that's evil. That's pure evil. No doubt. These are people that want to destroy the country and they don't care. And their hatred of Trump is all they, it's their entire mm -hmm. focus. They are laser focused on him and they can't see the forest for the trees. They can't, some of them can't see the damage they're doing mm -hmm. because they are so focused on Trump and destroying him. They don't see that the, the, what they're doing to the country because of this. And they don't care. No, but, but you know what? Trump's winning. He's coming back. And, um, uh, that's a good thing. I, I must tell you his winning now. I, I want to, and we're winning. I want to remind everyone, Mike Lindell has continued the free shipping on, Everything at MyPillow.com, everything site-wide with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. You know, I got a, a message, uh, someone commented on one of my YouTube videos. They have not slept in over a decade until they got the MyPillow. And oh, they slept my on my gosh. Pillow. That's a, well, I'm sure they slept a little bit. No, they had not had a good night's sleep not like in, night's in, sleep, in 18 though. years. You know, yeah. the, the, they need the mattress topper, then they'll really sleep. Oh, my really goodness. Great. Absolutely. You know, the my pillow itself, the, the my pillow that started it all is under $30 with our promo code Kane, plus free shipping, free shipping on everything site wide. Oh, there's great deals. No matter how large, no matter how small, no matter how heavy, no matter how light, free shipping with our promo code Kane, plus the special deal. But I just want to talk about the um, my pillow that started it all because I got this message on, on YouTube. That patented fill that Mike Lindell invented that's inside, what it does, it's, it, it, it makes it so that not only does your head and neck rest perfectly, you don't talk, you don't move your head and neck at night. You're in place and you're comfortable. Every time you move your head, you wake yourself up even if you don't know it and you are no longer in REM sleep. It's, it's, it's a miracle. So go to MyPillow.com. Use our promo code Kane, K-A-N-E. It is free shipping site-wide. All right, that's all the uh, time we have for today, but uh, we will be back. Next time, I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. Thanks for listening.